grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Eternal Lord, your kingdom has broken into our troubled world through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. Help us to hear your word and obey it so that we become instruments of your redeeming love through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. For this third Sunday in the Lenten season, hear this reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. St. Luke wrote, There were some present at that very time who told Jesus of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered so? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those 18 upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who dwelled and dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit upon it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, Lo, these three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, Let, let it alone, sir, this year also, until I dig about it and put on manure. And if it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of Man and the Son of God, and I bring you his love. Amen. In our gospel reading today, we hear that Jesus learned of many deaths that had occurred in the surrounding surround, area surrounding the Sea of Galilee. Someone told him of great loss of life there due to harsh Roman oversight of the province. Jesus therefore made comment about the incident and he also cited another tragic happening that had occurred when a tower had collapsed in Jerusalem and killed many bystanders. Both occasions had caused deaths, some of which seemed quite oppressive and undeserved, I suspect, to some. Thus, our Lord's followers needed to hear his views concerning those events. In their minds, as in our own, they may have wondered why those that had perished died. Were they of greater sin than the rest? Jesus reminded them that our holy God confronts all evil. Thus, all who are sinful and imperfect before God's perfection are confronted. They are confronted first by their sin, and secondly, they are confronted by the punishment for that sin. Now, we remember the persons who are close to us who die, family, friends, acquaintances. And as well, we see strangers like those Muslims murdered in New Zealand and unbaptized persons and infants who seemingly are innocent also die. Why so, we ask? The answer Jesus gave to his followers long ago was clear and simple. He said these persons were and are no worse than anyone else. And unless you repent, he said clearly, you will all likewise perish. You see, death is the universal punishment for our sinfulness, our separation from God's perfection. No one lives unless God wishes them to live. Therefore, the reading clearly reminded Jesus' followers to repent of sins 
and their doubts without delay. Today, the message reach, reaches across the centuries to warn us. Jesus called upon his audience to realize forgiveness and embrace the promise of eternal life that would be given to them through our Lord's sacrifice. As a people and as a church then, we need to grasp the story of Jesus talking about the fruitless fig tree. He warned those in Israel of their failure to adhere to God's mandates. He warned them, he warns them, and he warns also our churches, and we ourselves against being cut down as unproductive branches. You see, our task is clearly to bear fruit in the kingdom as we fail to warn those around us. In Luke's gospel then, the focus task as inheritors of the apostolic message concerning sin and death was that they were to remain faithful to the gospel proclamation, even though the apostles were gone from the scene. We also are called by Jesus to turn away from depending on how this world's powers are going to behave. In the midst of our living and dying, we are to just grow and bear fruit, and we are to preach the good news. Given that all evil is of the same in effect now and then, and that we humans are not now to hope for any longevity or lasting accomplishment outside of Christ, let us be reminded in the knowing that we are each sinful by the evil that we do and what we fail to do. Evil powers still slaughter. Towers still certainly fall upon us as well as the ancients of those days. They do so upon us and upon everyone around us. Therefore, we Christians should realize that today those persons who yet live amid the news of death in New Zealand because of terrorism, deaths in Africa due to religious intolerance, and deaths in the Far East and other places because of natural disasters, these people needed to hear the gospel and be graciously baptized in the kingdom. I ask you how many more deaths will occur before we begin to declare the gospel as we should. So let us own the sinfulness that we have, that we do not share as we should. Consequently, we, the Christian church, have been given a warning from across time. Repent and turn. Do not be cut down. The gift of life given to us is for us to have and to be opened and be used abundantly and shared. So it is and so it shall be. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon with mercy and give you his peace.